Hello folks, hope you're all doing well. We are using a new gadget today. So I've got a GoPro here that I'm filming today. Normally I would do my videos on my phone, but you know, there's problems with the sound sometimes because I use this, uh, what's called a gimbal and it needs to be on the, the exact right weight, it needs to be balanced perfectly. And sometimes if you have the radio mic hanging off the side of it, it doesn't balance properly and the camera goes all over the place and it's rubbish so I either end up with rubbish sound with wind noise all over it or rubbish footage with the camera going all over the place and it takes me ages to film stuff. So we've raided the piggy bank and we've got a GoPro so we're giving it a shot today. So the next few vids the footage might be a bit wonky, we might get some strange angles, we might get different things going on as I learn to use it because it's got different modes, different functions, different attachments and things so we'll be giving it a bash and seeing how it goes. Anyway, on to today's video. Um, there is a bit of wind outside actually I should say to begin with, so that's quite quite good. Normally I hate it because it makes the microphone all noisy, but I've got a special mod on the GoPro and it's got what's called a dead cat over the microphone that should keep that wind noise away, so we'll give that a shot as well. So, I'm just up here for an hour, young Robbie's away, he's got a, a tennis class this morning during the school holidays, so I'm grabbing an hour, I've got to get everything watered up just inside the tunnel, because we had rain last night and rain the day before, which was great, so everything outside got watered, but all the stuff inside the tunnel needs done, so if I spin around, you see the tomatoes there, and over here, you might get wonky angles again, because I'm just learning to use this, but the, the, the chilies have gone absolutely crazy the last few days they're huge there's loads of green on them so hopefully we're going to get some fruit off them soon but we'll see but the main thing i'm going to do today is a quick harvest so i've got some stuff out there that needs needs taken up we've got the two the last two buckets of the early potatoes they need to come out and we also need to take some courgettes the never ever ever ending supply of courgettes there's some green beans that i think that are ready for picking and i'll have a little bit of a mooch about and i'll see what else there is ready to take and we'll take that home today but we'll have a bit of a mooch about as well and see what's going on anyway we'll head outside the tunnel and we'll see what's happening out there back with you in just a jiffy right so first things first is let's get on with having a look at these potatoes now this this bucket here when I've picked it up is pretty light um, so I'm thinking that the compost and it's pretty dry which isn't ideal but we'll we'll have a look once uh, once I've got all this all those shores off the top we'll just snip them off there that's the compost bin right there by the way you may remember from the the last one of these that, that, that I did when we did the the first bucket as we do this in this area of the allotment right next to where the compost bin is so I can just chuck that straight over there and believe it or not a miracle has happened and I've actually got a label here that tells me that these are Charlotte potatoes and these were planted on the 5th of May so what's that May, June 8, 10, 12 yeah they've had about 12 weeks so Let's tip them out anyway and see how they look. Like I say, look at that, it's pretty, that's pretty dry when it's come out of there, but I can see some potatoes around here, they're quite small, but let's get right in and about this and see what we can find in here. First of all, a good sign is no ants. <laughs> Again, the last, the last one of these I did when I did the first two buckets, we had some ants in there there was an ant's nest in the bucket and uh yeah we've got this one there i'm just gonna pop them down to the side there and i'll show you them all at the at the end there's four not too bad a start oh there's a seed potato oh right let's keep going oh there's a there's a few more so these these buckets were all planted in the same way with the same mix and there was three seed potatoes put in each so we'll see how many potatoes we get from the three seed potatoes right let's just start getting right in and about this oh my god that's not too bad more coming now I'll, like i say I'll, I'll show you them at the end i mean they're not they're not massive these charlotte ones but i tell you what they look like lovely potatoes I'm going to do absolutely beautiful. 
quality over quantity, I think, is the uh, is the case on this one. There it is, but we'll keep we'll keep going because there might be some little tiddler ones hiding somewhere, and we'll see what we can find. We'll keep digging them out, but I must admit the one the one thing I have noticed this year this is the first year I've done these potatoes in the buckets, so we've just got these. These ones here, they're 30 or 35 litres, I think they are, and there's, there's loads of people who use them for loads of different stuff. And I think the, the, the difference is the potatoes are so clean compared to, to what they are when you put them in the ground. I mean, there's no scab, there's no marks, there's nothing on them. But again, this is just pretty much pure compost that I put in there with some blood fish and bone feed so there's nothing really to cause them any sort of problems and it you know what for the for the sakes of a a couple of quid for a for a bucket well you buy them in packs of 10 so I kind of mind how much it was I think it worked out at about two or three quid for one of those buckets and then a, not even a bag of compost per bucket and obviously year on year you can use the buckets again and again and again and again for loads of different stuff because I'm using them, see I've got 10 all together, I'm using them for carrots as well at home and I've not brought them up here yet so I think we're just about done on the first one, let's just have a good it always pays to have a good, a good rummage through because you never know when you might have missed one you yeah, don't. It's just, I'm just going to sort, I'm just putting the shores and the roots down there because if there is any tiny little potatoes on them like that, I'm just going to sort them out off camera because I don't want them going in the compost or else we'll end up with potatoes growing in the compost. But I think, oh, there we go, you see, these are the little tiddler ones that you've got to try and find in and about your soil and decent ones that you've missed as well yeah have some we'll, we'll save a good rummage around see what those get it all broken up there we are right and if you bear with us just a second I'm just going to dump this material down here because I'm not going to chuck it in the compost and by the magic of video editing I'm back with the second bucket so again same routine is getting rid of all this greeny yellow material off the top here straight into that compost bin I probably don't need to do this you know this is probably an unnecessary step but I don't know it's just just one of those things I do as Right, here we go. Let's get this upside down, out it comes. One woodlouse, no ants. Again, always always a relief not to see the ants. Now I didn't see a ah there it is. Again, a miracle's happened and I've labelled something. Charlotte. So these ones are Charlotte as well. Exactly the same way planted as, as, as the first ones. So let's see what sort of return we've got on this. Now this, we say when I picked this up I said this bucket was a lot heavier and already I can see the compost in here is a lot, certainly at the bottom because it's been raining and these sit at the edge of the polytunnel there must be a lot of runoff. Certainly at the bottom where all the roots are there's a lot more moisture in the compost so let's see if that's made much of a difference. Oh dear that's not looking good I hope that's the seed potato and we haven't just got a bucket full of rotten potatoes because that would be a bit rotten. Let's put these ones over this side and then we can do a oh yeah I think it is a seed potato We've got some some good ones coming out now so we'll just put that in that pile there to get rid of stuff yes yeah, the seed potatoes coming out some more there Right, see what we can find. Well, here we go, here's a good handful. There is, so I'll be 
keen to know, just while I'm digging through these potatoes, what you make of the new camera setup and the sound. Hopefully, there's not as much wind noise over it, because like I say, I've got the dead cat over the microphone that is meant to stop that. So if you let us know in the comments down below what you think of the new camera setup. But we're going to be we're going to be working on it over the next few weeks, so it's going to be a bit of trial and error, a bit of figuring stuff out. Like I say, it's the it's the GoPro and it's got the media mod on the top, so it's got a directional microphone. So before when I was walking behind the camera, you might lose some of the volume. So we do have a radio mic that I'll start using properly if that causes a problem with the sound. So you say the next next few videos on the channel might be a bit a bit wonky some. <laughs> some funny angles, some funny shots as we get used to all the different modes and different attachments and things like that. But I think longer term, for you guys, it's certainly going to make for better videos, it's going to make better footage and, and things like that. So obviously, I make zero money from this YouTube channel and that's, that's absolutely not why I do it and I don't have any intention of doing so. So all this gear, all these GoPros and accessories and things, is paid for out of my own hard-earned cash out of my pocket uh, it is but if you like what we're up to just while I'm doing this please feel free to give the channel a subscribe because that's our reward for doing this is getting subscriptions it's always nice to get them or like I say leave comments below let us know what you think of how the videos are going how the footage is if it's a load of junk or if it's any good and also give us the thumbs up give us a like while we're on that, while I'm just digging through these potatoes, let's talk about likes and comments on YouTube videos, because you, I see a lot of channels where people say, give us a like, give us a comment, and all that sort of jazz, and I do that as well, we all do that, because it's great when you put time and effort into doing it, but the key thing is for that, YouTube have what's called an algorithm, and that tells people what is a good video and what isn't a good video. So if your videos get comments and likes, it gets bumped up the rankings. And what that does is, you know when you watch a YouTube video and you get to the end of it, and it puts recommendations on for other people's videos? Well, if your video happens to be one of the popular ones, if you've got likes and comments, you've got more chance of your video appearing at the end of other people's videos and the hope is that somebody does what's called a click through and clicks onto it and then goes onto your video. And you can see from the, the analytics, when you make videos, when you do YouTube stuff, you get analytics in the background and you can see what people are watching and what people are clicking and things like that. And, and it really, really does make a massive difference on the what's called the click through rate. And the, that's the number of people clicking through those links onto those other videos. So if you ever hear YouTubers on any subject, any sort of channel whatsoever saying that, that's why they're saying it. I'm giving away all our all our YouTube secrets here. Not that it's not that there's anything secret about it, because you can you can go and find it. But the one thing I do love is the comments. And certainly a few of the videos recently, when I've had a few problems, like the one the other day where we thought we might have blight on the main crop potatoes over there and loads of comments back people saying no they don't think it is it looks like looks like it might be sunburn or it looks like it might be natural dieback and i think it's actually a combination of both of those two things and it's absolutely brilliant getting the comments going on things like that so on this one i'd love your comments and your feedback about the filming about the quality of the the footage and the sound because I'm always keen to improve that sort of thing because there's, there's nothing worse I hate it I hate it when there's a video and it's got loads of wind noise on it and it's one of my bugbears and this is this is quite a windy site I've got here and I see other other YouTube videos with a load of wind noise on it and all and it drives us around a twist so hopefully we've got a solution to that problem so we'll give it a bash anyway I think that's just about enough of me waffling on about YouTube and cameras whilst I'm digging these tatties out. So I'll just get rid of this soil. I'll be back within a second and we'll show you all the potatoes in the barrel at the end here yeah? and we'll see how the crop is. 
there we have it that's the haul of potatoes from those two buckets say so they're all they're all charlotte potatoes which is a a second early they were planted on the 5th of may you know oh, i maybe could have given them another week or so but i don't think there was much point because all the shores were dying off there they were they were pretty much done so you can see them in the in the barrow here the two different buckets I, I don't weigh them you know maybe if, again leave a comment below if you want me to start weighing them i can get a set of scales and weigh them to show you how many we've got but you can you can see there in the barrel how many we've got from the two buckets it's it's pretty even stevens to be honest there's not there's not much in it but they're uh they're not massive that you know charlotte's a second early it's a sort of new potato kind of thing so i wouldn't expect them to be massive but again i was saying before about the about the quality of them from the bucket how clean they are let me just move that up to the camera so you can see it and hopefully you see that there you know there's nothing at all wrong with it there's no marks there's no scab there's no nothing there's just a bit of dirt on it which is great for preserving the potatoes i usually leave the dirt on until i want to use them so they'll get taken home we'll do one of two things with them one just boil them up have them with a bit of butter on top with a lovely meal and the other is with the new potatoes well probably the main crop is as well i like to do something called smashed potatoes so get your potatoes in the boiling water 10 15 minutes depends on the size of the potatoes get them on an oven tray get the potato masher out smash them down a little bit so the skins break up and you see the insides you then get a mix of olive oil and garlic a bit of paprika i use smoked paprika to give it a bit extra flavor drizzle it over shave a bit of parmesan on the top whack them in the oven for about another 15 minutes bring them out and you've got this this lovely sort of crispy skinned garlicky cheesy potato thing to go with any meal that you fancy so there's a there's a serving suggestion for you to go with the potatoes anyway enough of me waffling about tatties you can see them there i'm going to pick you up on the camera again apologies if it's a bit dodgy but we need to go and pick some more stuff and and, and, and to be honest i think i'm just going to wheel the barrel around to, to pick the stuff up so we'll go over there we'll get some courgettes we'll get some green beans we will get some cucumbers i think i think there's some cucumbers ready as well in the tunnel so we'll go and pick them and we'll we'll go and grab a few things back with you in just a jiffy right so because we're playing about with a new camera you're on wheelbarrow cam so this is either going to be great or it's going to be absolutely terrible so we've got you attached to the arm of the wheelbarrow just as we have a little a little much over here around the corner to the courgette and what i need to do is i'm just gonna Pop wheelbarrow cam down there a second. We'll take you off, hold on. There's loads of attachments on this camera, so I can attach it to lots of different things and I can just pick you up like this on the little sort of tripod thing. And we're just gonna pop into the polytunnel because I need some scissors. So let's give this a shot. Here they are in the in the messy allotment bag that goes it goes home, it comes to the allotment, it goes home, it comes to the allotment, but it's full of those just things that you need you know what i mean right so i just run on the we're going the long way around oh i might pick some beetroot actually while we're here there's some beetroot needs picking so let's go over here have a look at the courgette now i'm lucky i've, I've got long sleeves on today i don't know sometimes when you when you touch these courgette leaves sometimes i get a bit of a sort of red bit on my skin when i when i touch it but that's that's not bad for a courgette that one normally they're, they're after, honestly if i left that another day or two that would probably be twice the size and they get absolutely massive so quickly and i think while i'm here uh, you know i just think that i think the green ones just maybe need another day or two uh, just to keep going again that you know, if I, could, if I can get up tomorrow, I'll probably pick them tomorrow. But I think they're just about done. So there we go. We've added a courgette into the mix. Let's go back round here. And if you bear with us a, se a second, I'm going to attach you again. Here we go. Wheelbarrow cam take two. So this is either going to be the best allotment YouTube video I've ever seen or the worst. All right. Let's give this a shot. Here we go. You can get dash cams and all sorts of stuff for your car, so why not wheelbarrow cams for the allotment? Right, we're not going very far, we're just coming up here to the beetroot. 
Now the beetroot's been going great guns. So we've already picked, I'm just undoing you from the handle. So we've already picked one load of beetroot. And now it's time for some more. Now my worry is a lot of this beetroot, let's pick this one for example, is gonna be massive. You see that's, it's a, it's a good size that actually, that's, that's not too bad. My worry was it was gonna be so big that it's gonna go woody. So if you leave beetroot too long, it goes a bit funny. Like, like this one, yeah, let's get this one. All right, look at the size of that. It's near enough, a Swede, never mind a blooming beetroot. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll boil that to the, to the nth degree to get rid of all that all that woodiness and we'll we'll pickle it um, and that's just you know I, I wouldn't want to throw something away just because it's a bit you know a bit woody and I've inadvertently picked that's a lovely little one actually I've inadvertently picked that I was pulling out some some weeds uh, with this stuff that that grows absolutely everywhere and every bed on everybody's allotment and everybody's garden uh, I mean it's, it's dead easy to pull out but it just, uh, it, it just spreads, it spreads like wildfire. Let's put this one as well, that's getting awfully big. There it is. And I've just spotted a little, a little rescue job we need to do. So I've no idea how, because we've got the Enviromesh on it over here. And you saw us put the broccolis out, but there's a bee in there. So let's just open that up and see if the bee's clever enough to come out. What I might do is I'm just going to tip that back over there. There it goes. It's away. Right. Take the closer lid again. If I don't fall over this bed. There we go. Right. Have we got enough beetroot? Do we need some more? Let's have a look down here. Just take this clip off. Let's see if any of the golden... Oh, look, that started to bolt that beetroot. Let's see, this is the problem when I left these ones too long and they've all grown in a clump together I'll still take them right they can go in the barrow I'll trim all those leaves off actually before the end just so you can see everything that we've got but you might remember the golden one was sown direct yes yes that's a pretty decent size one that's about about the size I want to be picking them you know let's just fire that in there Oh, let's have a look up here. I think there's going to be some... Another... Oh, there's another one there I need to pick. This one. That's a fair old size. And I think that will pretty much do for now. Right. Here we go again with wheelbarrow cam. Now, the problem with wheelbarrow cam now is you've got all that beat foliage in front of you. So let's just... Let's get you fastened up. Sorry it goes all wonky while I set up. Right, and I'm going to turn you to the side just so you can see round the corner from the beetroot leaves. Right, here we go. Back we go. Right, I'm standing on all sorts of bits of wooden stuff that's behind us here. Right, around the corner. You can all judge my wheelbarrow driving as well while I'm doing this to see whether it's any good or not. Right, here we are. Next stop. Green beans, right. Excuse the wobbly while I unhook you from the side of the wheelbarrow there. But let's have a look down here so you can see in and about these plants are some decent. These appeared really, really quickly. I mean, I saw a, I saw a few flowers in the plants and then all of a sudden these, just kind of, these beauties were just there. So, pop them down there it's a bit a wee bit awkward sorting this out so you're getting a good a good close-up of everything today as opposed to watching me like I'd normally have it set up as opposed to watching me you're getting a sort of close view of everything I'm picking once again once I get a bit more used to this camera and I'm gonna get I'm probably gonna get different posts and stuff set up around the allotment so I can just in, in certain places where I do my filming so I can just quickly clip 
the camera on and off and that'll make it much easier and much better for you guys for seeing what I'm what I'm sort of up to and the sort of shenanigans that I'm doing right let's just adjust this you're back on wheelbarrow cam and we're just gonna head into the polyphenol to grab a couple of cucumbers here we go right we're reversing again I hope you're judging my uh, wheelbarrow driving skills here so uh, I've picked a really tight corner to try and get around there which isn't gonna work so <laughs> I failed I failed my test on that one let's go around this way there we go I've hit a rock is that class as a fail as well oh here we go right back right next to the polyton here we go unhook you Let's go in and have a look. Uh, again, these are the these are the never-ending cucumbers. So this this plant here, I picked. I think I picked five cucumbers the other day, and you can see there's already a load of them on there. And this one here, there's a couple, a couple here. That one's I reckon that one's just about ready to pick. So you might think they look quite small, but these. These are a variety called mini munch and I've found that if you if you let them get much bigger than this then you start to get big seeds inside and it's it's not too bad because I mean you can you can just eat the seeds I mean they're, they're quite soft and the and they just taste of cucumber but I'd rather eat them you know at that sort of perfect time to eat them so there's a couple of cucumbers to go in there as well we've got some of the some of the bigger ones on down here you can see the sort of darker green and it's got that typical sort of spiky outside so that one again another another week or so i reckon that'll be good to pick this one here has just got some little little tiddlers on growing it and i'll i'll not give too much away in the the polytunnel here because i reckon in the next the next day or two i'll be doing a a tour for august so you can see all about what's going on in here with all the tomatoes and the peppers and stuff anyway back out here with our bounty and we'll chuck it in there and it's by magic if I spin it around nicely you'll get me so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tidy up all this stuff in the wheelbarrow here then you can see the crop at the end and he'll show you show I'll, blah, blah, blah. Uh, that's good video isn't it and I'll show you I'll show you what the harvest's like today when we've been in about the beetroot and we've got the different bits and pieces and see how it's looking back with you in just a jiffy so that's everything tidied up. Let's just have a wander out here and see what we've got in a sieve by magic. I'll spin these round and let's have a look in here. So we've got all our new potatoes here. Remember that's that's the Charlotte variety. But a nice sort of golden courgette, a couple of cucumbers, a load of beetroot and a handful of French beans. So not bad for a day's work. That is me pretty much done for today. I'm off to go and water everything inside the polytunnel, get all that sorted. Off to collect Robbie from Tennis Club, then I think we're going to go to the cinema this afternoon and it's the first time we've been to the cinema since all that lockdown stuff started all that time ago. So about 18 months, two years maybe, since we've been to the cinema, so we're going to go and get some popcorn and a hot dog and whatever else and have an absolute whale of a time. Righty-ho, that's me done for today and we'll see you on the next one, folks. Bye for now.